As you know, we have reported on military members' concerns regarding the potential ties between climate change and its effects on U.S. operations around the world. Now a group of military veterans is launching a national clean energy build tour, including today's stop here in Washington. Joining us today is Jonathan Powers. He is Chief Operating Officer of the Truman National Security Project. He also served for four years as a U.S. Army officer. Jonathan, thank you for being with us. And Thanks Captain for Powers, thank you for your service for your country. Thank you. I appreciate it. We appreciate it as well. Uh, let's talk about the main issue here. As I mentioned before, we have heard from military members, active and retired as well, that there is a pending threat to American security because of climate change. Absolutely. There's a growing consensus across the board, not only from retired military leaders, uh, generals, admirals, Iraq, Afghanistan veterans, but you now have the CIA, the Pentagon, all our national security apparatus beginning to move quickly at addressing these challenges. Uh, what are the, the key things that, that you see, Jonathan? I know we've had examples of, say, uh, the base on Diego Garcia, an island that is key in international uh, uh, deployments for lack of a better term, but one that could be underwater if sea level rises uh, come as much as predicted. Absolutely. There's been a lot of discussion about energy security. And, you know, we're spending billions of dollars overseas in the hands of t to many countries that, are, that want to see us hurt. Mm -hmm. But from the climate perspective, one of the biggest challenges we face, the CIA did a, a national intelligence estimate that looked at sub-Saharan Africa as one of the most critical areas that climate change will, will hit hard. Mm -hmm. And what we have there are fragile pretty much unstable governments in places like Sudan and Somalia. And climate change acts as a threat multiplier. So the challenges of, of, of droughts and, and migration to already destabilized governments causes a breeding ground for extremist groups to come in and take advantage of, recruit the next generation of terrorists, mm -hmm. like we're seeing today in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, these are major, major challenges that the military is looking at, and they realize that climate change plays a critical role there. I think you could add Yemen to that list after oh, the past absolutely. several weeks we've been dealing with here. And if you uh, think about where he came from, he came from Nigeria, where there's tremendous instability because of uh, the, some of the, oil, the, the work that some of the oil companies are doing on the ground. Well, Jonathan, let's talk about why you're starting here in Washington. Uh, what are you looking at in terms of the attention you want to build here? Is this essentially a grassroots tour you're taking across the country? It is. It is. It's, it's actually the third part of a, a tour we've had going on since last fall. We had Congressman Markey today out in front of the, the Congress mm -hmm. launching this this leg we're doing 16 states with over 60 stops hundreds of veterans coming out uh, and this has been an incredibly powerful message we have local veterans going into the community at doing press conferences round tables uh, and just meeting meeting with local folks talking about the challenges and the message has been incredibly clear people understand the security threat and it gives a sense of urgency and why we need to move forward with clean energy legislation. Now, especially at a time like this when we are at war overseas, I think every member of Congress uh, is quick to cleave to whatever the U.S. military says it needs. But how do you bring together such disparate sides over something like clean energy? If they can agree that climate change is a threat to the military, you still have such divergent views on how to address climate change. It's true. It, it's a challenge. And I think the one piece that's been very interesting has been a very bipartisan approach to understanding the challenge. I mean, we work with, with guys like Senator John Warner, uh, retired Senator John Warner, Republican, and, and John Kerry. I mean, when they dropped the Kerry Blacksman bill, I'm sorry, the Kerry uh, Boxer bill just mm -hmm. back a few months ago, it was all our veterans on stage with them because they understood that the security message is powerful and that middle America, independent America, a bipartisan approach wants to secure our future, and that, that's why this has played a really important part. Now, you've identified something of a two-pronged threat here. Let's start with one of those. That is the dependence on oil, which your group says is now funding our most dangerous enemies. What's your alternative? How do you foresee us getting off of foreign oil? Sure. Well, I think we've got to, we've got to first invest in moving towards clean energy. There's got to be, obviously, movement here at home, which has started. Uh, we were talking earlier, you guys were talking earlier about the movement towards windmills and solar, and, and there are, there are it's going to be a process, but I think, for instance, the, uh, the legislation that's moving forward now gives us the carbon incentives to move in that direction. Mm -hmm. I think there's a tremendous amount of venture capital fund ready to go. They're looking for the, uh, the, the government to lay out a structure for them to work within, mm -hmm. and I think that's going to really unleash the American power that we have. Uh, what about the second aspect of this? That is destabilizing climate change as, as the cause of these problems. How do you address this internationally in some of these far-flung areas we mentioned, Nigeria, Yemen, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, through legislation here at home? I think part of it is, is our development funding and what we're doing from a smart power approach. You know, uh, and any, any veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan will tell you it's not the soldiers and the weapons that will bring the security. It's bringing stable, a stable community. 
And so what we have to do is go to some of these challenging areas. We have to go into places like Sudan and help the community drill a well. We've got a guy right now looking at Afghanistan and about building a windmills for local communities in Afghanistan so they have localized power and no longer are reliant on a broken, fragile, a corrupt grid from the central government. Mm -hmm. And that'll bring local, not only local security, it will keep the recruiting pool that the extremists are going to take advantage of minimized. Mm -hmm. All right, Jonathan Powers is COO of the Truman National Security Project. He also spent four years in the U.S. Army attaining the rank of captain. And Jonathan, again, good to have you with us. And Thank I hope the tour much. works out well across the country. Appreciate it. We'll keep you updated. All right, thanks again for your service as Thank well. Thank you. It does mean a lot to us.